And to complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. What used to be a two-month paid maternity leave is now extended to 105 days or three and a half months in both the private and public sectors. This after Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea confirmed President Rodrigo Duterte has signed the Expanded Maternity Leave Act. Senator Risa Ontiveros, the proponent of the law, welcomes the enactment of the expanded maternity leave. The Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, for its part, aims to finish the implementing rules and regulations of the new law within 45 days. We will expedite the IRA. And marami ng sectors nag volunteer to contribute to IRA. Eventually, they will accept Now it's for the good of everybody, especially our women workers. Filipinos will benefit more from the universal health care law that President Rodrigo Duterte has signed recently. The law's primary aim is to reduce the Filipinos' out-of-pocket expenses during hospitalization. These shall include consultation fees, laboratory tests, diagnostic procedures, and outpatient medicines. Meanwhile, the Department of Health, or DOH, assures they will work on prioritizing residents in depressed areas. Suffice it to say that we will endeavor to ensure that the geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, uh, the upland barangays, the communities where we have the indigenous peoples, uh, and uh, uh, other uh, uh, living at the fringes of society be given a priority. Meanwhile, the Department of Labor and Employment, along with other government agencies, will begin an inventory of illegal foreign workers in the country. This amid the rising number of foreign illegal workers in the Philippines. Agency, may, may sarili silang inventory. Hindi magkatugma. Kagaya lang sa BID, ibang figures sila, ibang figures namin, ibang pogo. DTI. So we have to come up with a, a consolidated inventory. During a Senate hearing this morning, however, Senator Joel Villanueva said there had been lapses in the issuance of special working permits or SWP. He argued the Bureau of Immigration lacks capacity to vet if a job can be done by a Filipino worker or not. The Bureau of Immigration um, napakadali makakuha nitong uh, special working permits at uh, yung process nila halos uh, hindi natin uh, ma-appreciate kung talaga bang uh, uh, tinutumbok nito yung uh, proteksyon ng ating mga kababayan na nakasaad sa ating konstitusyon. The Bureau of Immigration for its part said they are open to work closely with the Labor Department on the said matter. In other news, the Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, confirms that a suicide bomber remains in Mindanao. DILG Secretary Eduardo Año said a Yemeni suicide bomber has been staying in the Philippines for more than a year now with a wife and a child. The individual from Yemen is with other foreign terrorists from Indonesia, Pakistan, Egypt and Malaysia, authorities said. Yung sinasabi nating suicide bombers na na-train, ito yung Yemeni. But there are foreign terrorists uh, who are also living in other parts of Mindanao. But we cannot say that he is, uh, no, he is a suicide bomber. No? Kasi foreign terrorists sila, they're, they're providing support, advices to the local Abu Sayyaf. Anyo added that as of this time, they have no intel reports on any terroristic plans of the Yemen suicide bomber has. Iloilo City hosts the national simultaneous earthquake drill this quarter of the year. Disaster preparedness in local governments is the goal in conducting such drills this year. Vincent Arboleda tells us why. The nationwide simultaneous earthquake drill was held today with Iloilo City as the host. During the exercise, the various agencies in the city were tested on how well they could respond in case a magnitude 8 earthquake rocks the city. 
Drills were conducted in five separate areas in the city. Some 8,000 participants from the Iloilo City Government, the Iloilo Provincial Government, the government agencies and the private sector were involved in today's event. The earthquake drill aims to find out how prepared the government and the entire community are for a magnitude 8 quake. After the drill, the Iloilo City Government was able to assess several areas to improve on in terms of their disaster preparedness measures. Isang nakikita namin dapat magpalakasin ay yung ugnayan ng mga BRNCs at saka po ng, ano, ng city government. Iloilo City has 180 barangays. So there's a need for us na mag-leverage mag para po mas maabot po namin yung mas maraming barangays. Representatives from national agencies such as the Office of Civil Defense, who were present in the drill, also gave their initial assessment for the simulation. 100% very successful. No? Uh, yes, kita uh, mo naman yung participation ng lahat ng uh, agencies, especially sa Iloilo City government and our responders, then the people itself, but, uh, the people of Iloilo. And that's the way how to, how, how to react when it comes into uh, disaster income. They also stress the importance of the private sector's involvement in such activity. Uh, some resources are lodged with the private sector. That's why we should have partnerships, we should have standby agreements, we should have standby arrangements with our uh, private sector partners. Para patuloy po yung synergy na ito. The National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council or NDRRMC the Department of the Interior and Local Government, and the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOLCS, are expected to release tomorrow the final results and assessment for the earthquake drill in Iloilo City. The NDRRMC advises local governments to use technology and the information provided by other agencies, such as FIVOLCS and the Department of Science and Technology, to formulate better measures in preparing for disasters and calamities. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Iloilo. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Dumaraos live from Bangkok, Thailand. Kath, good evening. Good evening, William. British billionaire Richard Branson hopes his benefit concert for Venezuela will break an aid impasse at the country's international border. Beverly Saison tells us why. Workers were busy setting up the staging grounds for the Venezuela Aid Live show being organized on the Colombian border with Venezuela. Event organizers say some 250,000 people are expected at Friday's February 22nd concert, which organizers say is aimed at raising $100 million to provide food and medicine for Venezuelans suffering widespread shortages. Billionaire Richard Branson is backing the show, which will be held in the Colombian border city of Cucuta. The event will feature performances from at least 35 artists, including Alejandro Sanz, Maluma, Luis Fonsi, and Carlos Vives. Um, I think that uh, if, if, obviously, if, if we can persuade the soldiers to open the bridge, uh, that is the ideal outcome from this concert. Uh, that will then mean that you know, people who are dying from cancer because they, they're not getting the right uh, pills or, or, uh, or other illnesses, um, they will be able to get med medical help. Uh, there will be a million people led by one Guido waiting on the other side of the bridge to distribute uh, food, medical supplies to the people of Venezuela. The presidents of Colombia and Chile are set to attend the free concert, which has evoked comparison to Irish rock star Bob Geldof's 1985 global Live Aid concert to raise money for famine relief in Ethiopia. Donations to the event, which is set to take place near the Tienditas Bridge on the border between the two countries, will be received online and via direct deposits. Hundreds of tons of humanitarian aid from the United States and other countries are being stored nearby. The food and medicine are set to begin being moved across the border on Saturday, February 23rd, though it remains unclear Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro, who denies any crisis in his country, will allow them to pass. Increasingly internationally isolated President Nicolas Maduro, who denies there is a humanitarian crisis in Venezuela, says Western relief efforts coordinated by the opposition are part of a U.S. orchestrated coup to overthrow him. Pink Floyd co-founder Roger Waters has also slammed the upcoming as part of a U.S.-backed effort to tarnish the socialist government. It has nothing to do with humanitarian aid 
at all. It has to do with Richard Branson, and I'm not surprised by this, having bought the US saying, we have decided to take over Venezuela for whatever our reasons may be. I don't think that Roger Waters is the best uh, expert when it, come, when it comes to what's going on in Venezuela. He says that you know, it's a democracy, uh, people are not suffering, uh, and, uh, and, it, and it's just not true. I mean, any, anybody who uh, knows anything about Venezuela uh, should know that, that that is, to be honest, a load of rubbish and, and that uh, Venezuelans need, uh, need help. Maduro is planning two rival concerts on the Venezuelan side of the border on Friday, and the Venezuelan government says it will distribute aid to poor Colombians. Beverly Saison, UN TV News and Rescue. A former Carmelite nun in France is joining the chorus of voices condemning a Catholic church for passivity in the face of alleged sexual abuse. Eileen Sarudo explains why. In her recently published book, The Tyranny of Silence, Claire Maximova accuses a French priest of raping her and his superior for turning a blind eye. The Vatican will gather senior bishops from around the world starting Thursday for a conference on sexual abuse designed to guide them on how to best tackle a problem that has decimated the church's credibility. Maximova pressed charges against the priest in 2017 and the case is awaiting trial. Unlike most alleged victims of clerical sex abuse, she has decided to show her face to the public in a bid to encourage more victims to speak up. Maximova calls the abuse and the subsequent inaction by authorities a serious sickness. It's as if it happened every day. In her book, Maximova narrates how a priest, whom she trusted as her spiritual brother, gradually became physical in their encounters. It started by attempts to kiss her and culminated in several incidents of rape, she recounts. Born in Ukraine, Maximova joined a Carmelite monastery in France at age 24. It was there where she met the priest whom she chose to be her counselor. She left the convent after 10 years, seeking to engage as a nun in the outside world, where he remained her spiritual guide. The priest violated her during counseling sessions over a span of one and a half years after she left. Gradually, his actions were more and more inappropriate, and this ended up in rape. She reported him to his superior twice, only to be surprised that not only did he escape sanction, but he was even assigned to run a convent. Maximova points to a structure which includes ingrained virtues of obedience as the root of sexual abuse. If a person finds themselves in a position of vulnerability for one reason or another, with the way it's drilled into you, with the vulnerability, the isolation, obviously we are served on a platter for perverts and predators. Deciding that being a nun was no longer her calling, she gave up her veil and now teaches English at a school in Versailles. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV. News and the Rescue. An amazing phenomenon stuns Yosemite National Park visitors. Meanwhile, police and transit officials in New York City are investigating how an accident occurred at the Grand Central Terminal in Manhattan Tuesday evening. This report explains why. In Bangladesh. The death toll from a fire in a centuries-old area of the Bangladesh capital, Dhaka, jumped dramatically to 70 on Thursday. A fire official said the number of casualties could keep climbing as firefighters combed the wreckage of the destroyed building. The fire started in a four-story building on Wednesday night and spread to nearby buildings in the Chok Bazar area of old Dhaka. About 200 firefighters fought for more than five hours to bring the blaze under control. The building where the fire began had housed a plastic warehouse and contained flammable material. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. In Switzerland, a French ski patroller has died from injuries after being caught in an avalanche in Switzerland. Rescuers have called off their search after finding no more casualties on the piste in Crans Montana. 
After a large avalanche spilled onto the Peace Town Tuesday, four people were pulled from the snow and taken to Sion Hospital, including one victim in a critical condition. And in the USA, a man died after a moving New York City subway train apparently caught his clothing and dragged him into a tunnel on Tuesday. The incident happened at Manhattan's Grand Central Station. The unidentified 39-year-old man's body was recovered inside the tunnel after the train came to a stop. There was no immediate word on how the man became ensnared. Meanwhile, a natural phenomenon was captured by visitors in the Yosemite National Park. Firefall is the name for the natural magic trick that creates the illusion at the park in California. It comes to life when the setting sun causes light to hit the waterfall at just the right angle. According to the National Park Service website, the stunning effect can only be seen in mid to late February and only on clear evenings when the waterfall is flowing. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News Send Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Kat Dumaraos, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Three hundred meter indoor world record holder Noah Lyles is confident to become somebody bigger someday. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. American sprinter Noah Lyles is dropping plans for a sprint double at September's World Championship in Doha and will focus only on the 200 meters. For months, Lyles had talked about going for gold in both the 100 and 200 meters in his first World Championships. But the emphasis now will be on his best event, the twice Diamond League 200 meters champion said. My coach has now come to the conclusion that he believes that I should gain my first gold before going into the Olympics and trying to double. And I agree with him. I think it's very smart that, because right now I'm in a position where if I get up in that final, I know I can win that 200. Lass has not lost a race in the 200 meters since 2016, but there is work to be done in the 100 meters, especially on his start where Christian Coleman and Ronnie Baker are America's fastest. But the 300 meters indoor world record holder is confident to become somebody bigger someday. When Michael Johnson left, who was the next Michael Johnson? Yeah. When Carl Lewis left, who was the next Carl Lewis? I mean, there have been at least five athletes they have compared to Bolt before I got here. I mean, all I can say is they're always going to be looking for the next something. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. Many Filipinos watched and welcomed Miss Universe 2018 Catriona Gray on her grand homecoming parade. Mon Hock Son will tell us why. Regardless of the scorching heat, Miss Universe 2018 Catriona Gray tirelessly waved and smiled to her Filipino fans on her grand homecoming parade earlier. Wearing a Sampaguita-inspired Terno jumpsuit by Maktumang, Catriona is excited to see all who support her in her journey. The Grand Homecoming Parade float is based on Maktumang's Mayon-inspired dress and her Mikimoto crown. The float was made by Fritz Silorio, who also designed the float of Miss Universe 2015 Pia Wurzbach Homecoming Parade. The Grand Homecoming Parade of Grey navigated the cities of Pasay, Manila, and Makati starting around 2 p.m. at the Sofitel Hotel and culminating along Ayala Avenue in Makati. Many Filipinos were shouting and waving to Catriona as she passes by thousands of fans waiting for her on the street. The float was escorted by MMDA traffic enforcers and traffic constable to manage the expected traffic congestion. Many roads were closed to traffic, but immediately opened once the float passed by. The parade ended at 6 in the evening at Glorieta Edsa in Makati City. Meanwhile, another parade will be held in honor of the Miss Universe 2018 on Saturday, February 23, around Araneta Center in Quezon City. Mon Hokson, UNTV, News and Rescue, Makati City. Pampanga-based designer Mac Tumang has created another masterpiece for Miss Universe 2018, Catriona Gray. Tumang posted on his Instagram account the two outfits for Gray's homecoming parade. 
The two pieces, as glamorous strapless dress and a Philippine terno, were inspired by the country's national flower, the Sampaguita. According to Tumang, you will definitely know your home when you smell the aromatic fragrance of the Sampaguita. Aside from bearing Sampaguita designs, his creations were also adorned by patterns and the color of anaha, which is the Philippines' national leaf. Tumang first made headlines after his lava gown creation created buzz in the 2018 Miss Universe pageant. And those are the reasons behind the news of February 21, 2019. On behalf of Pina Villamor Camara and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo because we need to know we will always ask why. Good evening.